I'm delighted to be here at the King's College. I've heard about it for several years, and uh, uh, I'm really intrigued to see it and to meet you all. I'm going to talk about learning humility. Um, the, the, the talk has two aspects, really. The first aspect is to try to figure out what humility is, to say what humility is. And that's going to take most of the talk, I think. But then from this idea of what humility is, uh, we'll try to uh, infer some ways in which one might work on oneself or possibly even others to uh, help acquire uh, more humility. Nobody, I take it, is no, no regular sinful human being is perfect in humility. And the virtue that I'm going to describe is the perfection, right? It's the, it's the ideal. It's not, it's not something that we actually see exhibited except maybe by our Lord. Um, but um, so, so when, we, when we ascribe humility to somebody, when we say so-and-so so is, is humble, what we really mean is that the person is, has made some progress <laughs> in that direction and uh, that that's, uh, that's notable. I want first to, uh, to try to set humility in the context of the virtuous soul, the whole, the whole soul, uh, you might say. And virtues are these dispositions, they're, they're uh, states or readiness, states of readiness, you might say, readiness to respond emotionally, readiness to respond in action uh, to various situations that arise in, in life. Um, and then their excellences, right? Their excellent dispositions uh, to of the soul. And so, I want to say that so, some virtues seem to be centered on motivation. They seem to be a, a matter primarily of motivation, or maybe the center of the virtue is a state of motivation. Something that you love, something that you care about, something that moves you to to action and moves you to emotion. Um, then other virtues, and so examples of that would be justice, compassion, truthfulness. Each of these would be a kind of love, right? If you love justice, you, um, you hunger and thirst for justice. You, you hunger and thirst for righteousness. If, you, uh, if you're a truthful person, then you care about the truth. And uh, you, that really, really matters to you. And when you find yourself not being completely truthful, you feel bad, right? And uh, you admire people who are truthful and so forth. So all that is in those virtues. But then there are other virtues that seem to be primarily not a matter of what you care about as uh, sort of capacities of self-management, capacities to, to, um, to order yourself and to bring yourself to do things maybe that you don't want to do sometimes. Uh, courage would be an example. We get scared, right, in situations where we ought to be a acting. And, uh, and so courage would be the ability to kind of overcome that fear in the interest of some, uh, some goal or action or, or other virtue. So we might, get, we might exercise courage in the context of justice. Uh, that is to say, we might be courageous in order to do a just thing. So I think that covers a lot of the, <clears throat> of the field of virtues. But humility doesn't seem to fit in either of those categories. It doesn't, at least to me, <clears throat> it doesn't seem to me that, that uh, humility is either some kind of caring about something or some kind of an ability to manage ourselves. It seems to me that it's something else. And it, uh, as I survey the things that it might be and think about instances of humility, it seems to me that Humility is a kind of absence. That is to say, it's an absence of pollution. <laughs> now, you might think it's kind of odd for a, 
for an absence to be a virtue. Uh, but if you think about water, for example, uh, and somebody's praising water, they say, well, this, this spring has wonderful, wonderful water. And, uh, and you ask, well, what are the properties of this water that make it so wonderful? Um, one of those things is going to be purity, right? And if you do a chemical analysis on, on water and try to find the purity, right? Try to identify, isolate the purity. What you find is that the purity isn't anything in itself, right? It's just the absence of all the pollutants. And so <clears throat> I think humility is kind of like that. It's a kind of an absence of some vices. Now, here are, the, here are some of the vices that I think humility is an absence of. Um, vanity, hyper-autonomy, domination. Domination is this desire to sort of bully and be, be, uh, throw, throw one's weight around, dominate other people in the interest of one's, uh, one's own sort of ego or something like that. Uh, NVIDIA, that's a word that is meant to cover both envy and invidious pride. <coughs> so, uh, we'll talk a little about each one of these um, vices. Um, let me just begin by illustrating vanity. We'll have illustrations of some of the other vices as well in a moment. But I, I thought we, we should start out with a concrete example. So here, here's the example. After giving birth, the vain woman refuses for months to be seen in public dieting and furiously exercising until her figure returns to its former beauty, and she vows never to let herself get pregnant again. The prospect of being seen in a saggy condition feels humiliating to her, even when the cause of it, having given birth to a, another human being, which is, of course, a very noble and wonderful thing, uh, is obvious to everyone. So, so, Vanity, it seems, is a matter of caring too much about other people seeing you in a in a in a um, in a an advantageous light, in a complimentary light. Caring too much about how other people view you, and maybe seeking to be v viewed as a as very very attractive and, and important and impressive uh, sort of person. I want to say that these vices of pride have, a, have some of these the um, following properties. Um, they are concerns. So they're, they're formally like those virtues that are concerns, right? Caring about something. The vices of pride are ways of caring about something. But what their ways of caring about is a pseudo good. It's not really a good thing, uh, and but it's but it's a but it's a kind of a false good. And concerns generally, this is a general statement about concerns. They they carry some kind of understanding of the object of concern. Right? You can't be concerned. <clears throat> about anything without having some way of thinking about the thing that you're concerned about. Um, so if you're concerned about your safety, for example, you would have a certain conception of safety, and your conception of safety might have physical, physical aspects, physical safety, but you might also think of yourself as safe from various kinds of emotional abuse or... Uh, or whatnot. But in any case, in order to, to care about being safe, you have to conceive safety in a certain way. And in, a, in the same way, these concerns for um, the pseudo good, I'm going to, I could, sometimes I call it self importance, uh, sort of being, uh, being a big shot or something, being, being, uh, important. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to say just exactly what this kind of pseudo-importance is, 
because we all want to be important, don't we? Uh, and it's, it's absolutely crucial to human life that we be, that, that as individuals, we be important and feel important. So it's not wrong to feel important, <laughs> but it, I mean, to, or, to, or to want to be important, but it is wrong to have this, to want, want Im, to be important in this sort of pseudo way that I'm trying to identify. And, it, and it's going to be characterized by the vices of pride. So vanity would be one way of caring about being important that's a false way. Uh, and um, selfish ambition would be another one. And um, self-righteousness would be another one. That's, there, you, there you're sort of feeling... You, you, get, you get your feeling of importance by comparing, you with somebody, comparing yourself with somebody else who's who you take to be less righteous than yourself, right? <laughs> so, and that, there seemed to be something really wrong with that, right? It, uh, I mean, that just seems repulsive on the face of it. And so that kind of concern for importance is, uh, is vicious. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so these, these uh, kinds of, these concerns, these vices, are all misunderstandings of the human good. They're sort of ways of being oriented to a good, but it's not really the good. It's, the, it's, a, it's a false, false good. Um, so, as an absence, humility then is an unconcern, a lack of concern for these false goods. It's not a lack of concern to be important, <laughs> but it's a lack of concern to be important in this pseudo-false way. Um, I think that vanity is a nice example of that. We've seen, I give, gave you an example of, of uh, vanity as a vice, but, um, but if you think about, th there are certain psychologists, um, Heinz Kohat uh, is one, the, the object relations Freudian psychologists or others. And the, these psychologists have an insight, which I think is exactly right, and that is that um, we need, each of us needs to be appreciated. And especially when we're little babies, we need to have had the experience of our mother looking into our face and smiling and expressing joy, and joy in our existence, right? That, 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 sort of, that sort of sense, mommy thinks I'm great. And of course, the, the baby isn't going to be able to articulate it that way, but he gets a sense of his own importance by having had that childhood experience of being loved. And um, vanity... Is, is kind of a nice example, uh, or nice way of illustrating the difference between these two um, kinds of importance, the pseudo-importance and the real importance. Um, in this way, uh, the vain person wants to be adulated, wants to be famous, wants to be... Um, Envied, perhaps, or to be so impressive that other people are afraid. Those are, those are ways of being vain. But truly, the true desire for, for importance as a person is a desire to be loved, right? We want to be, you might say, appreciated in our essence, not just not just appreciated for, you know, how pretty we are or how, uh, how super intelligent we are or, or something of that sort. That isn't vanity. Wanting to, be, wanting to be important to somebody or wanting to be important to God and realizing that we are important to God. That's healthy. That's spiritually good. 
Um, so the vices of pride manifest themselves in various emotions. And it turns out that they, they pretty much...